How to make a closed terrarium that could potentially outlive you. Get yourself a jar. Just make sure it seals tight. I prefer this size or larger. And then for the false bottom, we're going to be using Lekka. Do not store these near your Reese's Puffs. That really threw a wrench in my morning. One layer above that, we've got some horticultural charcoal. And then one layer up further, we've got some sphagnum moss. And then for substrate, we're going to be using a basic ABG mix. That stands for Atlanta Botanical Gardens. Plants absolutely love this stuff. I don't really like it. I've tried it and it tastes like garbage. Although I am risking introducing mold to the setup, I'm going to include some cork bark and some sticks from around my yard. We're going to want to choose some plants that can handle high humidity and don't get too large. So I'm going to be using some native moss that I got in my yard and then some spike moss from a greenhouse and then some baby tears. Baby tears are usually a pretty welcomed addition to a closed terrarium and then a very annoying addition to a commercial flight. Springtails are amazing. Their job is to eat the mold. Isopods are optional but a really cool addition and they're great workers too. So I added in some dwarf whites. Little guys, go eat the poop. You're then going to want to give it a really light misting. Distilled water tends to work the best and then probably almond milk works the worst. And if this goes well, you may never have to open this again.